Today, I'm being the big sister that nobody asked for. The girl that's always at the bathroom, I know. <laughs> it's my brand at this point. Anyways, today I will be doing... Oh wait, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new to the channel, welcome to my channel. I'm Steady, and in today's video, I will be doing a girl talk. So I'm gonna be that big sister. You know, your virtual bestie big sister. And look at my cute little top, you guys. I don't know, I just feel so cute today. I feel like I wish I could show you my cute fit, but I can't. Anyways, let us begin. So I posted a story on Instagram asking my followers to ask me questions that they want me to answer on this video. And as usual, you guys pulled through. So I wrote the questions down on my planner and I'm going to be answering the questions. So firstly, before we get into the questions, I have divided the questions into sections. So we have Coochie Diaries, we have Self-Love and Femininity, and we have Relationships. So it can be easier for someone who asked the question and they just want to get to the point and get that question answered. You can look in one of those sections and see if the question falls under any section that I just mentioned. So the first question says, girl, I know this is too intense, but let's talk feminine hygiene. How do I get rid of this yeast infection? Girl, yeast infections are a girl's worst enemy. I'll start with telling you things that cause yeast infection so you can avoid it. And obviously that will lead into how to cure it, you know? Anyways, a yeast infection can be caused by a lot of things and it occurs when like the fungus candida it's not like that i forgot but the fungus candida and the bacteria around your vagina grows and that can be caused by a lot of things it can be caused by wearing the same underwear again and again um being on your period and not changing your pad or whatever enough because it's like all the bacteria and everything is like up in there or just being on your period period like just being on your period and you're still changing the pad and everything but you're on your period so this means that your ph level is not balanced that's why you're feeling like this um itchy burning sensation in your vagina because your ph levels are not balanced your ph levels um let me say a healthy ph level is between 3.8 and 4.2 so once your ph level is not in that scale then it's imbalanced and you'll start experiencing those type of symptoms. Speaking of pH, there are a number of things that can throw off your pH. First of all, being using scented painted liners, scented pads, scented like feminine wash soaps, scented stuff in your vagina. You're not supposed to do that, okay? Your vagina is not gonna smell like perfume, sunshine, and rainbows, girl. No, please stop. You're just killing it. You're burning it. It's, in fact, you're making it worse. If you're buying the, the scented painted liners thinking, oh, I want it to smell good, girl, you're making it worse. You're making it worse. I had to learn the hard way. And also my mom told me, but I continued. But that was in primary. Anyways, the point is, scented stuff is not good for your vagina. If you want like a feminine wash, you can use this Gynagard one. So far, this is what I use, or this Millet one. These I can vouch for because I have used before. So they're very, very great. They're both unscented and they're pH balanced, gynecology, gynecology, gynecologically tested. Gynecology. I don't know, that word. They're tested by professional gynecologists to make sure that they're safe. So I can vouch for them. So if you want to get something, get something that's unscented. You can't be using scented stuff on your intimate area that's very bad using soap like just general natural soap can throw up your ph sometimes taking a bubble bath like taking a bubble bath can sometimes throw up your ph it depends especially if you are you take bubble baths very often because like the soap and it's like scented you know i've heard people saying like it, it does happen so this thing of wanting scented stuff in your kushi is very wrong because it just makes it worse you have to be okay with the natural state of your coochie because i feel like a healthy vagina doesn't smell like anything like it just it doesn't smell like anything i don't know 
it's just it's an unexplainable scent but it's not a bad one i don't know how to explain it but that's how it's supposed to be and a sane grown mature person knows that it's like that's not gonna happen okay it's no and also these speculations on tiktok and whatnot i mean yeah eating cranberry and i mean drinking cranberry and eating pineapple is great for your vagina and whatnot but it doesn't make it smell like pineapple <laughs> you guys are so like i heard someone say it smells like you are lying you are lying to the people that's that's not true a healthy like a healthy vagina smells like nothing it doesn't smell like sweets and sunshine and pineapples and cranberries come on now people like what generally to cure a uh, yeast infection you have to take boric acid which is like this capsule looking kind of thing and like you insert inside your vagina it's like an acid like you're supposed to put it in there it's safe to put it in there and basically what it does is it cleans out your vagina and it comes out like discharged so it cleans everything and then it comes out so you're supposed to wear like a paint liner so it doesn't stain your underwear and whatnot boric acid is very very good i've just ran out of mine i use it every single time even though i don't have a yeast infection but just to avoid it i clean it you know after your period you're supposed to use a little bit of boric acid just pop it in there let it clean tomorrow do the same thing again like at least I do it two consecutive days because I feel like doing too, doing it too much is also not good because too much of anything is never good and the coochie is cleaned okay it's like healthy your pH levels are balanced and also as I was saying using a feminine wash during your menses is actually also very good because I feel like you know it really like cleans it out you know I mean I use this every single day not just like when I'm on my period as compared to boric acid. I feel like boric acid, I only need it when after my period to you know to like clean everything out and feel clean, you know. And also before a deep appointment, just like three days before a deep appointment. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry, girl. I am so sorry. But anyways, yeah, I do use it on those occasions. And also, I want to talk about. UTI pills. I'll just put a screenshot here because I feel like it's not readable or a picture, whatever. It says it assists in the maintenance of urinary tract health, especially if you like use public toilets a lot, like you're at school or anything. Those toilets, honey, have been used by thousands of people, so you chances of you catching UTI are very very high. Okay, so. I take these supplements to, you know, protect myself from getting UTIs and, you know, it just makes your urinary tract healthier and, you know, you have less chances of catching a UTI because, baby, <laughs> I think about your UTI is so painful. Oh, it's so painful. You see, I'm being upfront and raw with you guys. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like these things don't happen to us. Guys, I don't know why but girls are never really comfortable to talk about these kind of things and it's like well, you are a girl like <laughs> i'm sure even beyonce has one at some point so why are you so embarrassed talking about yourself anyways i have experienced a uti and i'm guessing it was because i used this one bathroom once it was so dirty it was a public bathroom there was a wedding there it was a wedding so it was those like mobile bathrooms <laughs> guys i had to i had to use it so like three days after i catch a uti and these help okay there are separate pills to cure the uti if it's happening this is to drink when you don't have it to avoid it have to avoid it happening like to reduce the chances of it happening so all of those things i'm not saying you should buy everything here but like it really does help like it really really does help also another thing i like doing just to keep my vagina healthy is that i don't like wearing underwear too much that means when i'm in public obviously i'm gonna wear underwear sometimes <laughs> it depends good to what i'm wearing but sometimes i don't feel like wearing it and also when i'm at home i'm always not wearing underwear because i'm at home i just wear my pajamas or wear my gown you, should, you need to let your vagina breathe because first of all it's cooked up in those underwear in, in that underwear the whole day especially if it's not cotton underwear another tip buy more cotton underwear instead of like you know spandex and all of the stuff cotton underwear is actually very very breathable so it's like 
it's like you're not wearing you're not even wearing underwear anyways i don't like wearing underwear especially when i go to sleep because the girl needs to breathe like let the coach breathe it, it, it's suffocating the whole day you're wearing panties you're wearing these things when you get the chance let it breathe okay it needs to breathe sana because i feel like also my shower my well bacteria is less likely to because if gashis and it's cooked up do you know what i mean so yeah also that the next question is do you think sex has an age restriction personally i feel like that's it should be up to a person when they feel comfortable first of all don't get me wrong the age of consent is 16 years old at least in south africa it's 16 years old so unless you're under 16 years old i don't even think you should be there or such stuff anyways i feel like it's up to a person you know you're supposed to if you feel ready and comfortable then sure and if it's safe safety people i'm not promoting like underage sex or whatever but like it's up to people you, you know you can't prevent these type of things the only thing i can say is that you always should be safe and comfortable that's the most important thing if you feel safe you're protected you're using protection and you're on birth control maybe i don't know because i don't think it's everyone that has the time to sit down and learn about their cycle and know when you're not gonna get pregnant it's not everyone so some people will have to use got birth control, okay? And guys use protection. It's a lot of things of what even sleeping with a person can cause the UTI. Yeah, you heard that. Sleeping with someone can cause the UTI. So when you're wearing condoms, such things don't happen. So it's a protection from a lot of things, STI and whatnot. Do whatever you want, it's your life. But be safe, protect yourself, and be comfortable. Don't do stuff because you feel pressured. Okay, if I can tell you guys when I broke my virginity, you'd be shocked. You, I doubt you would even believe me, because these days people do it at such a young age. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm not judging, but if you're under sixteen, I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, girl. Anyways, the next question says, should he wait? Is the ninety day rule a thing? I feel like it's a thing. Like it just depends on the person. Everything is someone's preference. So I like I'm not getting. Are you guys asking me or is, are you generalizing? Because personally, I wouldn't just like. I don't know. I feel like it depends on a person. If you wanna do it or not. But I feel like waiting is so worth it because a person can fake it for ninety days. Ninety days is like what three months almost. A person can be fake, like a person can front, because you know sometimes guys can like put up a front and pretend to be in love and lovey dovey and actually, Gandhi, they just want the coochie. So I feel like if you wait, a person can front for three months. So you'd actually see, okay, this person is serious. And besides, if they keep pressuring you, I think also, because what is three months? Like, it's not like we're saying eternity or 60 years, 60 years. When a person says, wait three months and you start fussing and saying all of these things i feel like that's also kind of a red flag so waiting is always worth it because first of all if they leave you then they were never worth it to begin with so when you didn't give yourself up to them and waiting is just worth it okay guys there's a lot of pros i can say about waiting so definitely definitely but it depends on a person some people are not into those things people just want to have hookups and one night stands i don't believe in those but some people just want to do that so do you girly moving on to femininity and self-love guys i'm burning up now <sighs> definition of a feminine woman in today's society and in today's standards compared to way back wait I don't know, maybe I'm not getting the question, guys. She says, like, a feminine woman in today's standards compared to way back. The, the definition doesn't change. It doesn't. A feminine woman is someone that has qualities that are considered characteristics of a, a girl or woman. So, I'm not sure how to answer this. But a feminine woman is a person that 
allows herself to receive a person that is calm you know i'm not saying don't get mad obviously you guys like taking things the wrong way but i'm saying like a you know a feminine woman is someone that's content in everything they do like and also a person that has is able to nurture a nurturing person like it's just stuff that we know so i don't know there's no difference between the definition of it now or back then because the definition always stays the same it's just that now a woman in general not a feminine woman a woman in general um is the, like it's very women in general now are just different from the women back then because we have like independent women now people have their own businesses you know stuff like that so the definition stuff I don't think it changes. Maybe I'm not getting the question, but it doesn't change. The definition stays the same. A feminine woman is a feminine woman, you know? So, yeah, I don't think I'm, I answered that. Yeah, I don't think I answered that the way she wanted to. I feel like maybe she, I don't understand her. So if anyone understands in the comments, please, answer anyways the next question says how to know your worth i feel like this question should be on the relationship section but also i put it on this section because knowing your worth is all part of self love because you need to truly love yourself to know your worth because i feel like and now hear me out walk with me i feel like the people that constantly go back to people who continuously hurt them and show them that they don't love because there's no way i don't believe that someone can be that naive to a point where they don't see what's happening they know exactly what's going on and they keep going back and i feel like it's a thing of self-love because in my mind i'm thinking if you love yourself to like you really love yourself you wouldn't let yourself be treated like this as much as you love this person and you wouldn't let certain stuff happen to them it's the same thing if you love yourself so much you wouldn't let st such stuff happen to you you know and there's no way that you don't think about it you think about it and you know it and you cry the re that's the reason you cry because you're like why is this person treating me like this you are aware why are you still going back like you know so i feel like it comes to self-love if you truly are content and in love with yourself you already have the love so if someone is not bringing anything to elevate or you know you're not gonna entertain them so you have to truly really love yourself because knowing your worth is loving yourself literally like when you don't know your worth you're not in love with yourself that's why you're constantly seeking other people to love you back to fill that hole with other people's love when you should be filling it with your own self love that's why i say i wanted to put this question under self-love because Knowing your worth is self-love, literally. Yeah, guys, there are certain things that, you know, you can forgive in a relationship and stuff like that, but there are certain things that when they happen, it truly comes down to you to ask you, you wanna, if you want to know your worth, let me just simply, let me just make this simple. If you want to know your worth, every time someone does something that hurts you, ask yourself, would, would a person who loves you do that? Would you do that to yourself? Would you do that to them? The next question says, how to be feminine? Guys, I don't really like talking about these topics because some people are very sensitive about these things. Like, they're like, oh, don't tell me to wear this. And, um, and I mean, people on TikTok sometimes like just spread false information. They tell you to wear a certain type of clothes and stuff. There are a lot of feminine women that just dress like a guy. But she's very, very feminine and like, you know receiving come all of that she has all the feminine characteristics but she just doesn't dress feminine and there are people who dress feminine but they're like masculine straight up masculine so it, it's not about what you wear that's all i'm gonna say it's not about what you wear but who you are and how in tune you are with yourself because if you're a woman by birth you're already feminine you just lose your like you just you end up not being in tune with your feminine energy because of the circumstances and the environment you grow around, you know, and then you 
end up adapting masculine qualities because you in, especially if you're in survival mode you can't be feminine and be in survival mode that is impossible but especially if you're in survival mode and always like you know because of the environment we are naturally born feminine but like you know circumstances and the environment changes that so if you are able to go back and be in tune with yourself your original self you're able to go back and be in tune with your femininity i think so yeah just be in tune with yourself know yourself love yourself know who you are it's not these things they tell you on tiktok which you have to dress this way speak like this speak so soft and uh, i mean those are feminine characteristics but we do have people who speak soft wear pink all the time do all these things but they're still masculine so it's not really about that I don't know how to explain this. I'm better I'm better explaining. Anyways, the last question on femininity and self-love says, do you ever experience envy? Of course. I am a human being, I'm gonna experience envy, but I have recently taught myself to stop envying other people because first of all you don't know how whatever it is that they, you are envying, how they got it, you know? so that first and second of all i feel like envy comes with lack you know if you're lacking something in your life you envy that person because you want it for yourself you know so you're just like so don't take it as like a bad thing you can change your envy into a positive thing don't let your envy control you and like trick you into hating other people being annoyed when you see them because like i don't know because sometimes you, you you hate a person because you're jealous of what they have and you want it and you don't have it so as soon as you're envious take it as yourself like take it as yourself trying to show you what you're lacking and what you want so it should be an inspiration for you to have that and get that not by taking it away from the other person not by sabotaging the other person this has nothing to do with the other person you only envy that person because you want what they have and once you admit that then you can start working on yourself to get whatever it is that you are so envious about from this person and you you end the envy you know just take it as a positive thing you don't have to destroy another person just because they have something you want destroying them won't do anything you know let's say someone wears their makeup really nice and you don't so you start leaving hate comments because you can't do your makeup properly and you start leaving comments like oh why are you always wearing makeup like enjoy your natural beauty knowing very well that you also want to learn how to wear makeup no stop it stop it and instead learn from that to see okay this person I keep thinking these thoughts about them because I actually want to be able to do the makeup as well, like as good as they do it and learn to do your makeup. You don't have to tear the person down and leave negative comments. You don't, it doesn't have to be negative. Make it positive and make it a learning thing, you know? <sighs> Guys, the rain is starting. I'm hot in this bathroom. You know when it's raining, the bathroom just is hot. It's hot in the bathroom. Anyways, I'm, this is the last question. I think I'm gonna make it part two. I don't know. So the last question says your ex when it comes to relationships, inconsistency, poor communication skills. Um, yeah, that's about it. And unromantic people. Yeah, I don't. I'm not saying fly me to Dubai, but like. I don't know, let's go to dinner, buy me flowers, something like be romantic. I can't handle people, no. So that's it. I'll just take one more because this one was so quick to answer. Are uh, relationships meant to last forever? I guess we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. I don't know, you guys. I mean, realistically, realistically. There's no relationship that lasts forever. You'll date and break up and you're alone. You date until you turn into like old people and the partner dies and you're alone. So I don't think they are meant to last forever, but it's supposed to be an experience. And I don't think you should waste it thinking about the bad stuff 
and the after. Just live in the moment and enjoy. Because let me tell you guys, one thing I've learned is that wasting your time talk like wasting your time thinking about the after effects of something and what might happen when it ends is keeping you depressed because you're not in the moment there's a okay we have two people here the other one spent majority of the relationship thinking about the aftermath how when they break up it's gonna hurt every day she's doing thinking about the breakup and the cheating and this other person is positive they don't think the negative stuff even though they know it's gonna happen because it's actually detachment. You see, once you teach yourself detachment, you're able to be in love and peace. You have to detach and actually be fine and okay with the fact that it is going to end someday. But at least you have it now and at least you have this memory of this thing, this beautiful thing happening and it's just so beautiful and it taught you a lot. You know, just be positive about it. Detach yourself. Be positive. Cause it is gonna end something and you have to be okay with that because they are gonna leave you someday for another woman they can die it doesn't matter but learn to detach detachment is very important and you be in love and peace anyways guys i'm super hot i'm just here <laughs> yes Thank you, so much. Thank you so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications to get notified every time I post a video because I post every Sunday. So, stay tuned. But I have to.